We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides. And we're back with prolific author and America's most syndicated columnist, Mr. Cal Thomas. Earlier in the show, we were talking about the uh, potential President Kamala Harris. Uh, but now, Cal, I want to spread our wings a little bit and uh, fly over European shores and discuss what's been happening there. Because to me, it seems that uh, there's a really good lesson to be learned, spe- specifically from the U- recent UK elections where the Labour Party, which for, for our listeners who, who don't know, I'm, I'm sure pretty much everybody does, but they're, they're, they're more closely aligned with the Democrats than they are with Republicans. Uh, and so the Labour Party won a significant victory in the number of seats that it got, 412 out of 650, uh, which means that they can operate with a huge mandate now. Mm. But in reality, they actually got less votes than they got in 2019 uh they got a smaller percentage than they got no so they got 1.5 more percent of the vote uh but actually less people voting than they did in 2019 when they were wiped out by the conservative party mm. uh, and although the uh, I, I love reading the american media view on this election cal because you had to say oh, it's, it's it's a real mandate for <laughs> the political left mm. and i completely disagree i i think and we have discussed this briefly, that the only reason that Labour won is because everybody abandoned the Conservative Party because, mm-hmm. specifically, they're no longer, they were no longer governing as Conservatives. What's your take, Cal? Well, I think that's good analysis, uh, Mark. Uh, I mean, I go back to 1979 when Margaret Thatcher was uh, uh, elected the first female uh, uh, member of uh, or first uh, prime minister. And then uh, that was followed by Ronald Reagan's election. And then we have, of course, uh, the Pope in Rome, three conservative people, theologically, economically, politically. Uh, The problem, I think, for many conservatives uh, in the U.S. and in the U.K., and even in France, is that we don't realize that uh, there's a new generation that comes along every 20 years. We have to resell our ideas against a uh, a value system that says, I'm from the government and I'm here to take care Mm -hmm. of you. Now, that has great appeal when it comes to human nature. You don't have to do anything. I'll take care of you. This is the wonderful thing about being a liberal. You never have to succeed in anything. It's all about feelings. Conservatives want to succeed. They want smaller governments so you can have bigger opportunity. They want lower taxes so you can spend more that you earn on yourself and your family. Uh, they, They want personal responsibility and accountability, not in the case of the U.S. district attorneys who feel sorry for people people who have shot up a neighborhood and let them out without bail to do it again. So we have to uh, reconvince and resell and re-persuade the next generation that our ideas work and are best for them. But we're not doing that. We're coasting along. And I think that was the problem in the UK with the Conservative Party in power for 14 years, uh, coasting along on inertia of what happened before. You can't do that in politics. Yeah, I, I completely agree, Cal. Although I, I suspect the time scale is slightly longer than twenty years, uh, but uh, it, it's, it's certainly in this country. But yes, there's absolutely that that idea that there were these great conservative ideals that were pro liberty, pro freedom, and then Tony Blair came in, mm. the the Labour whirlwind election winning machine, mm. and then he stepped down, and then mm. David Cameron. He even mm. called himself the heir to Blair. What? Mm. And that's from a different party. So David Cameron, the conservative prime minister, calling himself the heir to the most successful Labour politician of all time. Mm. And that's how he governed. And then, of course, that's what shaped the party. Mm. And so as, uh, as Nigel Farage, who's had some victories in British politics, let's be fair, he's had some victories. Mm. Uh, he said, you can't put a cigarette paper between them in terms of the difference between the so-called Conservative Party and the Labour Party. Mm -hmm. And I suspect, Cal, that there's actually something very similar, not with all of the Republicans, but a large swath of Republicans in the United States. They're essentially governing in or attempting to govern in the same way that the centrists in in the Democratic Party are governing. And what you end up with is 
nobody really wants to be there because the center is not specifically the center. The center is center left. That's right. Well, you also uh, have the problem, Mark, of, uh, as I mentioned before, of uh, big government. Uh, Mm. We have gone from uh, a time of the Calvin Coolidge era. This is the 100th anniversary this year of his our 30th president uh, ascending to the presidency of small government, low taxes, less spending to just the opposite. We have a $34 trillion debt in this country. No nation in the history of the world has been able to survive with that kind of debt, with an open border and with a loss of a shared moral value system. So we have lost our identity as Americans as men and women, made in the image of God, all of these things that founded and sustained America and other countries that embraced these ideals uh, for generations. And we've got to get them back. And and, uh, politicians need to remind people of the history of their own country and what made it great in the first place. Uh, What you have now, and you mentioned David Cameron, we have the same thing with uh, other politicians in the U.S., You have conservatives now who are more interested in managing big government than reducing it. Now, the left in America right now is attacking the Heritage Foundation, which put out a a brief called uh, uh, Project 2025 about an economic and political agenda for the next president they believe will be Donald Trump. The left has been attacking it as fascist and crazy and everything else. But among other things, it calls for, as Ronald Reagan tried to do, the elimination of the Department of Education. The Department of Education was created by Jimmy Carter as a sop to the uh, teachers unions. It doesn't educate anybody. We're so far behind in science and math and other countries uh, that uh, we have a long way to go to catch up. But we're right there at the top when it comes to transgenderism and drag queen story time and all of these other crazy things that have been introduced. We're right up there at the top with all of these demonstrations on college campuses against Israel that you saw in in the spring. Uh, But uh, uh, these these kids are interviewed. What do you mean from the river to the sea? They don't have a clue. They're paid demonstrators, many of them. So we are in disarray. The UK is in disarray and France is in disarray. It's the trifecta, Mark. (laughs) We're approaching the 100 year anniversary of uh, Alexis de Tocqueville's treaties on American democracy. Uh, And I wonder what he would think looking at it today. Let me also remind you, Mark, of Ronald Reagan's famous nine words that you never want to hear. I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Al Thomas, thanks very much. Thank you, Mark. We dismiss history at our peril. Liberty Nation Radio with Mark Angelides.